City because they qualified through for the event today. And then, of course, as we look to the previous first leg results, what an interesting race, race 13 proves to be. Russelling, who had a win first time out, is up against Rob Bradley, who also had a heat win. We've then got Rob Winderburn, Ivor Matthews and Dave Steer, all who had third places first time out. interested once again to see whether that start does give any of these crews any advantage either being on the inside or the outside both Russelling and Rob Bradley had terrific starts first time out and away we go it's either Matthews that looks to have got the best of the brakes this time but here comes Russelling on the inside of him Russelling and Paul Urigin is that have got to the first bend but they got Ivor Matthews right on the outside of them Ivor Matthews tries to turn in hard as they come out of that first bend well, Ivan Matthews and Peter Jones it is that have got to the front, but Russelling is right there with them. Roy Spreadbury is up in third place at the moment. Rob Winderburn holding fourth. Dave Steer trying to work his way through. And at the moment, Rob Bradley right at the back of the field. So a complete change from that first leg ride, but a much better ride this time for Ivan Matthews and Peter Jones. They lead quite comfortably now as they come down past us. Russelling and Paul Urich still there in second. Fight developing now for this third place as Dave Steer tries to find a way through and now Rob Bradley has got going as he's got a fight on his hands with Rob and Chris Winderburn. So all the changing going on further down the field. Royce Bradbury has pulled out so Dave Steer moves up into third place. Ivor Matthews still leading and it's opened up quite a gap between him and Russelling. Russelling has now got Dave Steer closing down on him. Dave Steer looks to find a way through. He sees a gap on the inside and through goes Dave Steer and Andy Orchard. Uh, Russelling drifting out slightly on that fifth bend. Dave Steer taking full advantage of it, but it's going to be first heat win for Ivan Matthews and Peter Jones. Last year's winners, of course. They'll be pleased to take a heat win. Dave Steer and Andy Orchard get second. Russelling and Paul Urich get third. Rob and Chris Winterburn in fourth. And a very disappointing fifth for Rob Bradley and Jeff Bradley. Transporter win for outfit number one, Ivor Matthews and Peter Jones. In second place, number nine, Dave Steer and Andy Orchard. In third place, number three, Russelling and Paul Urich. In fourth place, number five, Rob and Chris Winderburn. And fifth place, outfit number seven, Rob and Jeff Bradley. The winning time, 125.39. 125.39, that winning time. We've got out on the start line. And as we look through the lineup for race 14, sponsored by Square Deal Caravans, Steve Smith goes in this one. He's in grid three. He had a win first time out. And uh, of course, we've not seen anybody get two rides and two wins. Steve Smith, the only one that could still do it. He's up against Phil Pittman, Mark Edwards. And it is Phil Pittman that's uh, made the best of the starts as they go into that first bend. Looking for Steve Smith at the moment, he's back in fifth place. There's all sorts of problems on that first bend, but as they come out in front of us, it is Phil Pittman and Miles Simmons that have made the best of the starts. Duncan Tolhurst in a much, much better position this time, right up there in second place. Mark Edwards up in third, so all three of these crews having much better rides this time out. Steve Smith back in fourth place at the moment, looking for a way through, but he's got Mark Edwards just in front of him. Oh, Steve Smith tries the outside, he's going all the way around, but at the moment it's Phil Pittman and Miles Simmons that are setting the pace and don't look like being caught. Still Duncan Tolhurst in second place and Mark Edwards finds a way through at last, he goes down the inside, Steve Smith desperately trying to follow Mark Edwards through on the inside of Duncan Tolhurst and he does so going into that top bend, it all closes up for that second place, Bill Pippen's gone very wide, I'm sure that Mark Edwards and Steve Smith will have noticed that there's gaps being left there as they come out of that top bend, they're certainly tight into this top bend, there's no way through there, Mark Edwards realising that, closes up going down that back straight. This is where I expect to see a challenge going into this top end. D Smith not losing track of those front two as well. Mark 
market was again that gap spin left the market was just looking for it it's going to be close to the line but phil Pittman gets it mark edwards finishes in second place d smith and mick stays finishing in third that just the sort of result that phil Pittman and miles simmons wanted of well, race 14 completing the, all the second leg rides a win for outfit number 10 their first win this afternoon phil Pittman and miles simmons in second place outfit number eight mark edwards and nick walters in third place number 12 steve smith and mick stace in fourth place number 17 duncan tollhurst and paul baseby fifth place number 19 sage and eight and vince davis in sixth place number 15 john hiscock and matt steve the winning time 127.02 127.02 that winning time as we give you the result in german and then we will see a little bit of track preparation uh, no i'm on the pirellis <laughs> Right, I knew I had to prove me wrong. I knew this would be uh, hard. Right. Cheers, Alan. That's all right. Oh, obviously, oh, see the sponsor down the arm. Okay. Well, actually, I've come through that one, uh, Jim, quite safe. I mean, still in one piece, and they're glaring at me. And here we go with race 15 coming up. And Colin Tatum gaining well. It's Tatum versus Doncaster, and Scoey has a say in this as well because remember, Jeremy Doncaster and Colin Tatum. Second. And Jeremy Doncaster out in front again and Donkey going for a third win of the afternoon. Kelvin Tatum comes through, battling for second place with Steve Schofield. Glenn Cunningham is in fourth to look at his great three-way battle with Jeremy Doncaster. Kelvin Tatum had a tremendous struggle going on for fourth as well. Looks like Paul Fry coming through into fourth, or trying to get ahead of Glenn Cunningham, who's actually sitting in fourth at the moment. So, Jeremy Doncaster is having a tremendous afternoon. Jeremy Doncaster who leads as they go into the last lap. It's Steve Schofield in second place. Colvin Tatum in third. Paul Fry in fourth. Glenn Cunningham in fifth. Dunn in sixth place. And Gary Gullin for it. Second, Kelvin Tatum in third, Paul Fry in fourth, and then Glenn Cunningham, and then number 30, Lee Lanham. Oh, what a great race out there, really was tremendous. Jeremy Doncaster led throughout until that last bend, a little bit of a challenge on the uh, on the uh, first half of that last lap, and then Scoey really went for it, and a tremendous ride from Steve Schofield, and a great performance for the pair of them. Sponsored by the mobile phone shop at Andover, in first place, number 10, Steve Schofield. In second place, number 11, Jeremy Doncaster. In third place, number 1, Calvin Tatum. In fourth place, number 17, Paul Fry. In fifth place, number 18, Glenn Cunningham. In sixth place, number 30, Lee Lanham. In seventh place, number 33, Mitchell Godden. And in eighth place, number 16, Ben Dana. The winner's time, 1 minute, 28.66. Those numbers, 10, 11, 1, 17, 18, 30, 33, and 16. Well, die 16, die Zeit, 1 Minute, 28,66 Sekunden. Here we go then. Race 16, this one's sponsored by Point to Point uh, from the Industrial Estate of Andover. And, uh, well, hey, it's all happening on that first bend. Steve Bishop got a good start, but it was Paul Hurry who uh, bought his way through. Steve Bishop there uh, in that battle for second place, but it's Paul Hurry out in front. Steve Bishop uh, trying to get hang on to that second place, but Stefan Trussell here, the French champion, really keeping uh, a lot of pressure on the leader. like uh, Matthias Kruger trying to work his way through, sitting in fourth at the moment. So, Paul Hurry then, really going well here. Stephen Tressieu in second place. Steve Bishop in third, Matthias Kruger in fourth. So then, 
Paul Hurry there, Paddy Pratt. Really going well here, going for home. Stefan Trashier though is not giving up the struggle. These two have pulled away a little bit. Look at Stefan, look at Stefan. Once again, the challenge is on. Stefan's going for it. Is he going to get there? They're side by side as they come down the hill, but it's Paul Harry who gets there. Stefan Trussell, you in second. Steve Bishop in third. Matthias Cougar in fourth. And in fifth place, Philip Berger. What a great race between these two that was. Number two, Paul Hurry. In second place, number six, Stefan Tressoyou. In third place, number 15, Steve Bishop. In fourth place, number 26, Matthias Kruger. In fifth place, number 22, Philippe Berger. In sixth place, number 27, David Steen. In seventh place, number 29, Scott Nichols. And in eighth place, number 32, Christophe Martin. And the winner's time, 1 minute 29.72. In the third leg for the solos. And uh, we'll soon be in a position to take a look at those points, tallies, and see just uh, how the pattern is developing. Clearly we've seen uh, Jeremy Doncaster and Kelvin Tatum in absolutely tremendous form, but interesting to see how Scoey really rose to the occasion, didn't he? He went off to Jeremy and scored that splendid victory. So then, Steve Schofield, eh? The most successful rider at the Ace of Aces. Six wins over the years and uh, clearly right back on form. Who's going to lead the charge? Is it going to be Robert Barr? No, indeed it isn't. It's uh, Andy Smith who made the best of the starts there, but let's see if he can hang on in there. And it certainly looks as though... Uh let's see if he's managed to get through. Now it's Robert Barth in that second spot, but the leader is still Andy Smith. In third place, it's Bo Brule. And in fourth place, Steve Dorr. So then, Andy Smith, we have a seat in the front of the race. And a great start there, and we've really got away from the opposition. And there's somebody in trouble who's trying to complete race distance, I think, and uh, just keep out of trouble. It's Neville Tatum, in fact. And, uh, Neville obviously realises it's important. What's going on with that? So then, we look across to our left. It's still Andy Smith who's leading, it's still Robert Barth in second place, and it's still in third place, Bo Brule. So three very quick men are there, ahead of Steve Dorr in fourth, in fifth place, Trevor Banks, and in sixth place, number 19. So then, look at the challenge. Robert Barth closing right up on Andy Smith, closing right up on the three times British Speedway champion, but he doesn't quite get there. So it's Andy Smith who wins. Robert Barth in second place, Bo Brule in third. On your programme, in first place, number eight, Andy Smith. In second place, number three, Robert Barth. In third place, number 24, Bo Brule. In fourth place, number 28, Steve Dorr. In fifth place, number 12, Trevor Banks. In sixth place, number 19, Torsten Curl. And in seventh place, number 23, Neville Tatum. And a winning time, 1 minute, 29.50. 1 minute, 29.50. Those men in this one, Jason Cup, Robert Kessler, and Van der Helm, Simon Wig, Clayton Williams, Mark Loram, Tony Atkin, and Samo Malenko. Sam had a good ride last time out. Mark Loram desperate to make up points. Uh, he's got uh, had one win, of course, but he had one eighth place. Clayton Williams with uh, a couple of third, a uh, couple of second places. So then, it's Simon Wig we're looking forward. It's Clayton Williams Rick, gunning that uh, Roger Taylor Jawa has the advantage. Drops back to third. And it's Simon Wig. So then, it's Simon Wig out in front. Now then, is he going to come wide and let them close up on him? It doesn't look like, so Simon's really going well. Mark 
Lorem man in second place, and Mark Lorem is stalking every inch of the way. It's place where it's been Closing up the game there, but it's Simon Wig out in front. Simon Wig really with the bit between his teeth. Mark Lorem right on his elbow. Clayton Williams in third. Jason Crump in fourth. And then Sam Omerlenko behind him. So, Simon Wig there. Maintaining that advantage, but he's really got a, a job on his hands here because uh, Mark Lorem is not going to let him get away still. And we look back, and there's a change. Jason Crump has gone through the two. Look at Mark Lorem going after Simon Wick. Mark Lorem trying to close the gap. Most of it's using power, of course, they can run. That's not bad. Now then, can Mark Lorem come up the inside? Will Simon have enough speed? Simon Wick it is who wins. Mark Lorem in second place. In third place, Jason Crump. In fourth place now, number 20, Simon Malenko. Number 25, Simon Wig. In the second place, number 21, Mark Lorem. In third place, number 4, Jason Crump. In fourth place, number 20, Simon Malenko. In fifth place, number 7, Clayton Williams. In sixth place, number 31, Robert Kessler. And in seventh place, number 14, Anne van der Hel. And the winner's time on 1 minute 28.44. 1 minute 28.44. Nobody, of course, has maintained a maximum. We've got six crews that have had heat wins so far. Yes, it's hotting up. We look at race 19. This one's sponsored by R.A. Bowers. Oh, Rosemore Road, Parkstone, Pool. non ferrous scrap metal dealers, so if you ever have a need to use them, they are the people and tell them that you've heard of them through the Ace of Aces program. Looking at race 19, well, I mentioned we've had six outfits that have had heat wins. Three of them appear in race 19. Russelling had a win, of course, first time out. Ivor Matthews had a win second time out, as did Roger Misa, second time out. Roger Misa is sitting top of the points at the moment with a second place and a win. Ivor Matthews with a third and a win, and Russelling with a third and a win. They're certainly uh, just one point away from them. So, it starts to get sorted out when we get into these third and fourth legs. And of course the riders themselves are so very conscious of that. It looks as if we've got problems for Duncan Tollhurst at the moment. Indeed, Duncan uh, running back to the pits, so obviously... It appears that Duncan Toller suffered with a flat battery to the ignition system so that was obviously why there was the quick rush back to the pit area to get another battery and quickly install that he has already joined the line so the rest of the outfits now being called into line for this the start of these third leg rides <laughs> Well, of course you remember back to those second leg rides and it was Ivor Matthews that had a brilliant start. And, uh, if you remember the interview that Roscoe had with some of the sidecar crews, I want to mention, as always I think with these uh, outfits, what use of tyres are being preferred. Duncan Toller is making a brilliant start this time, it's him that gets to the front, that new battery obviously working wonders for Duncan Toller. So Ivor Matthews is right up there with him though as he gets into that first bend, Roger Mesa comes in in third place. And as they come past me for the first time, Ivor Matthews has taken over the lead from Duncan Tollers. Roger Misa goes after them as well. At the moment, Russelling fighting to get through into fourth place and does so on that pit bend. Goes down the back straight, seeing those front three going away from him. And I'm keeping my fingers crossed that that was just a wheel disc that flew off there on the far side. Sidecar wheel is fully intact by the look of it. And in fact, confirmed that it was Roger Misa's wheel cover that we lost on that far side but making no difference to him at all at the moment as he's trying desperately to catch Ivor Matthews and Peter Jones while well, they're certainly starting to come on form they of course hold the title of being last year's winners we watch them come round off this top end it's into the last lap they go this time Roger Misa still there in second place 
desperately trying to get on terms with Ivan Matthews and Duncan Solis has got back into that third but rustling now goes round the outside of them as they go down that back straight those two outfits always together as they go past us but as we look to see them go into that top bend as it gets close for first it's getting even closer for third place Oh, Ivan Matthews just about hangs on to the win. Roger Misa there in second place, but only just. And it was very, very close for that third spot as well. well it's, uh, it looks as if Roger Misa thinks the race isn't over yet. <laughs> Outfit number one, Ivan Matthews and Peter Jones. In second place then goes outfit number two, Roger Misa and Shane Lapham. Third place to outfit number three, Russelling and Paul Urich. Winning that battle for third means in fourth place we have outfit number 17, Duncan Tolhurst and Paul Baysby. Fifth place goes to number 19, Adrian Davis and Vince Davis. And sixth place, number 18, Richard Thomas and Kevin Woodley. The winning time, 126.16, 126.16 over Falk Truck Centre, made agents for Mitsubishi and Hammock Reach Truck Sales and Hire, and an interesting one in prospect, because I mentioned that prior to these third legs we have had six outfits that have had heat wins, with three of them we saw in race 19, the other three go in race 21, so we are going to get yet another crew to get a heat win from race 20. John Halsey's had a second and a third, Alan Blewett's had a second and a fourth, Rob Winderburn with a third and a fourth, and Rob Wilson with a fourth and a second place. So three outfits that have had second places, but all yet to have a heat win. getting all the outfits onto that start line. Oh, away we go, and looking across that far side, it looks as if John Halsey has missed the start, so he's got a lot of work to do. But as we get into that first turn, it is yesterday's qualifying winner, Terry Phillips and Chris Myers, that takes the lead. Rob Wilson has gone the long, long way round, and he's been taken very, very wide. Rob and Chris Winterburn have come through on the inside, up into third place. Alan Blewett and Barry Metcalf trying to get up into third. Rob Wilson looking again for that outside line. Still Terry Phillips and Chris Myers lead, though, from Rob and Chris Winterburn in second place. And Rob looking to find a way round. He's forced to go for that outside line again. Rob Wilson closing up much, much tighter this time. And it's now getting through into second place as Rob Winterburn is pushed wide. But Rob Winterburn has written a terrific bend and he stays wide. He goes after Terry Phillips again. Rob Wilson trying to get through on the inside. Rob Winterburn getting very, very close to the back wheel of Terry Phillips. Some problems for Rob Winterburn as he falls out on the far side. It now means that Rob Wilson and Tony Miles have moved to the front. Terry Phillips still there in second place. Alan Blewett trying to get back on the scene in third place at the moment. And very disappointing for John Halsey at the moment after missing that start. He's not been able to make up the ground on the rest of the field. But as we look to the far side, Rob Wilson taking full advantage on this lead now as he falls over the gaps and goes down that back straight into the top bend. For the last time in this heat as he comes around off the hill, he's going to take his first race victory of the afternoon. Rob Wilson and Tony Miles take it. Alan Blewett pushed through into second place. Terry Phillips back in third. John Hiscott finishing in fourth and John Halsey in fifth. Way to win for outfit number six, Rob Wilson and Tony Miles. Their first win of the afternoon. In second place, outfit number four, Alan and John Hutton. Uh, nearly said it, didn't I? Alan Blewett and Barry Metcalf. In third place, number 16, that is, of course, Terry Phillips and Chris Spires. In fourth place, number 15, John Hiscock and Matt Sleep. And in fifth place, number 14, John Halsey and Jason Glennie. The winning time, 126.87, 126.87. That point again, three outfits that have had wins 
Steve Smith had a win first time out, followed it with a third. Phil Pittman had a fourth first time out and then followed it with a win. Rob Bradley had a win first time out and then disappointingly a fifth place in his second ride. Mark Edwards goes in this one, he's had a fifth and a second place. Dave Steer, very consistently a third and a second. Promises to be an interesting one. It's now getting to the point where uh, these points are starting to get sorted out. is on that far outside gate. He now comes into line. Steve Smith right on the inside. <laughs> oh, at the moment, uh, only five outfits on the line that I can see. goes with him as they go into that first bend as it starts to close up in that first bend. It's Rob Bradley that's been forced wide. Will he manage to maintain that lead as he comes by me? is getting very, very close. Dave Steer is right up there on the inside. And Dave Steer pushing his way through in that pit bend. He's taken the inside line and taken full advantage of it as goes down that back straight leading from Robert Jeff Bradley. Roy Spedry is up in third. Steve Smith now moving through. He goes through the inside of Phil Pittman and Roy Spedry in one a sweet move as he goes down that back straight. Dave Sear then, still with the race win. Rob and Jeff Bradley still there in second. Steve Smith now right on the back wheel of Rob Bradley. And Rob Bradley puts it sideways. Steve Smith takes avoiding action. That's of course slowed him for the exit of the bend, but he now picks up speed going down that back straight. He'll close going into this top corner, I'm sure. Rob Bradley goes for the wide line. Well, he's gone very, very wide, and Steve Smith has seen it, and he's got the advantages. He's on the inside of Rob Bradley. Rob has a quick look over his shoulder. He knows that Steve Smith is there, and now Steve Smith goes through. Well, he goes up into second place. Rob Bradley is quick down that part of the circuit, so he stays with Steve Smith at the moment. Terrific scrap beat fought out for that fourth, fifth, and sixth place. Three outfits together. Where do you keep your eyes at the moment? Well, as they come towards the checker flag, it's going to be a race victory for Dave Steer and Andy Orchard. Steve Smith takes another second place. Rob Bradley takes a third. And then I think I'll wait for the lap scores to confirm what the other places were. It is outfit number nine taking first place. That's Dave Steer and Andy Orchard. In second place is outfit number 12, Steve Smith and Mick Stace. In third place, number seven is Rob and Jeff Bradley. In fourth place, number 10, Phil Pittman and Miles Simmons. In fifth place, number eight, Mark Edwards and Nick Walters. And in sixth place, number 11, Roy Spedbury and Steve Kensington. The winning time, 126.59, 126.59. So he's got a little bit of ground to make up. Calvin Tatum has been scoring steadily. This, of course, is the fourth leg and the last opportunity to score those all-important points to take you into the A final. There are, of course, A and B finals at the end of the day, but clearly the aim of all of them to get into that A final if they possibly can. That's the one with the big money prizes. Here we go, then. Race uh, 22 gets underway. Carvin Tatum with Clayton Williams uh, on his heels. They go around that top bend, and I'm about to help in there as well. So it's Carvin Tatum. Feet up sideways, beautiful sliding action. Kelvin Tatum still hanging on in second place. Glenn Cunningham it is in third. And Van der Helm in fourth. if he was going to inherit the lead then. Glenn Cunningham goes after Clayton Williams. Cunningham comes through, but Clayton will drive along. Glenn Cunningham. I'm sorry, it's Glenn Cunningham on the inside. Clayton Williams on the outside. And it looks as though Glenn Cunningham's got the advantage. 
They go into the last lap then with Calvin Tatum in front, Glenn Cunningham in second, Bate Williams in third, Bo Brill in fourth, and Bo looking to take that third place and win. Point at so far this time, but he's going to win. A victory for Kelvin Tatum. Glenn Cunningham in second place. Bo Brawl in third. Clayton Williams in fourth. And in fifth place, Steve Bishop. In uh, first place, number one, Kelvin Tatum. In second place, number 18, Glenn Cunningham. In third place, number 24, Bo Brawl. In fourth place, number seven, Clayton Williams. In fifth place, number 15, Steve Bishop. In sixth place, number 14, Anne Van der Helm. And in seventh place, the only other finisher, number 32, Chris Martin. And the winning time was one minute, 27.82. One minute, 27.82. They do race jackets, t-shirts, sweatshirts and baseball caps, all sorts of goodies that we see around the grass track and speedway scene. In this one go Neville Tatum, Matthias Kruger, Trevor Max, Tony Atkin, Paul Hurry, Andy Smith, Mark Loram and Lee Lanham. Trevor Max making a good start but uh, Andy Smith uh, gating well and uh, looking to... Uh, go here, it's Mark Loram and Andy Smith battling for the lead as they come down towards us, Andy Smith in front, Mark Loram in second place, Paul Hurry in third, and in fourth place as they went past us, it was Neville Tatum. And Mark Loram is uh, trying desperately to pull away from Andy Smith, still Paul Hurry in third. Still in fourth, it's number 23, Neville Tatum, and just behind him is Trevor Banks. Over Andy Smith, but uh, with the three times British Speedway champion after you, you really can't relax. Still it's Paul Hurry in third, Trevor Banks now in fourth, Matthew Kruger in fifth, and in sixth place, Neville Tatum. Go on the far side, then, Mark Second spot. Victory then for number 21, Mark Laura. Andy Smith in second. In third it's Paul Hurry. In fourth it's Trouble Banks. And in fifth, Matthias Kruger. <laughs> 21, Mark Laura. In second place, number eight, Andy Smith. In third place, number two, Paul Hurry. In fourth place, number 12, Trevor Banks. In fifth place, number 26, Matthias Kruger. In sixth place, number 5, Tony Atkin. In seventh place, number 23, Neville Tatum. And in eighth place, number 30, Lee Lanham. And the winner's time, 1 minute 28.47. The numbers are Steve Schofield, who we just saw beat Jeremy Doncaster. Alice Drimmel, David Steen, Steve Dorr, Philip Berger, and Robert Bath. Donkey in the middle, Robert Bath going with him and Robert Bath surely is going to get to that bend first. No he doesn't, but he's going to make it first out of the bend. So it's Robert Bath in front. Well, Jeremy Doncaster had such a super afternoon right after him. Steve Schofield in third. David Steen now going for fourth place, battling with Philip Berger. Jeremy Doncaster, nice, tight, economic line off that top bend. Still in third place at Steve Schofield. Fourth place, Philip Berger. One more lap to go, Robert Barth at 
Zulu is Jeremy Doncaster in second, Steve Schofield in third. In fourth place is Philip Berger. Track champion victory then for Robert Barr. Second place for Jeremy Doncaster. Third place for Steve Scofield. Fourth place for Philip Berger. And fifth place for number 27, David Steen. In first place, number three, Robert Barr. In second place, number 11, Jeremy Doncaster. In third place, number 10, Steve Schofield. In fourth place, number 22, Philip Berger. In fifth place, number 27, David Steen. In sixth place, number 28, Steve Dorr. And in seventh place, number 33, Mitchell Godden. And the winner's time was 1 minute 27.94. 1 minute 27.94, they bought. In this one, we have Sam Romalenko, Ben Dano, Robert Kessler, Paul Fry, Jason Crump, Thorsten Curl, Stephen Cressieu, and Simon Wigg. down the hill towards us and it's Simon Wig right on the outside this time and it was Jason Crump who made the best on the start Simon Malenko goes around and top end with him Jason Crump and Simon Wig right at the back he seemed in contention he must have had a problem coming off that bed and uh, let's see if he's got enough uh, in hand to close up take some good points Jason Crump now Samo Malenko in second place, Stefan Tresio in third, and Stefan really working with Well, this is uh, an unusual turn of events for Simon Wigg, real problems here. The man out in front is Jason Crump, the world speedway under 21 champion, and he is having no problems. He's really a terrific rider. And uh, he's done a grand job with Paul this year. Still in second place then. The Stefan Tresseau has broken away from Sam Romalenko. Jason Crump looks over his shoulder. The checker flag's just down the hill. Victory for Jason Crump. Stefan Tresseau in second place. In third place, Samuel Malenko. In fourth place, it's Paul Fry. And in fifth place, Robert Kessler. As follows, in first place, number four, Jason Crump. In second place, number six, Stefan Tresseau. In third place, number 20, Samuel Malenko. In fourth place, number 17, Paul Fry. In fifth place, number 31, Robert Kessler. In 6th place, number 16, Bert Dana. In 7th place, number 19, Torsten Curl. And in 8th place, number 25, Simon Wigg. The time, 1 minute, 29.73. It was going to be tight, it was going to be close, but would you have expected after 9 heats that we've had 8 heat winners? Absolutely incredible. 8 heat winners from just 9 heats, it means that the points are so close that it's all going to be decided on this fourth leg. There is just 5 points by my very unofficial reckoning between top of the points chart to, would you believe, right the way down to 11th place. Absolutely incredible this turned out this close. They go from Matthews and Meter on 16 points, Steer and Smith on 15, Wilson on 14, Ing on 14. It is all so close and they all must know that they've got to do well in this last ride as we get underway with race 26 and going into that first bend. One rider that knows he needs a good result in this one is Alan Blewett as he's got to the front going down that first straight. Rob Bradley's had some good results so far. He knows a good ride in this one will get him into the final. He goes into second place. Ivan Matthews on top points at the moment. 
goes into second place, does he? As he comes down with that bend, indeed, Ivan Matthews and Peter Jones do move up into second place. John Halsey knows he needs a very good result in this one and moves up into third place, but still the lead with Alan Blewett and Barry Metcalf. They lead from Ivan Matthews and Peter Jones. John Halsey has moved up into third. Duncan Torres now looking to attack Rob Bradley as well. He moves up into fourth place and Ivan Matthews has closed up on Alan Blewett. So Ivan Matthews, the only driver with two wins from three rides. He moves round the outside this time on this top bend. He's going a long way round and he's got in front. A tremendous corner from Ivan Matthews and Peter Jones. They've got themselves to the front. And this was exactly the result they wanted to get. They are, of course, the defending champions of the Ace of Aces. And they would love to get into that final and do it again on such excellent race conditions that we've seen here this afternoon. They come round towards the checker flag and that's going to complete four rides for them. And it means three wins. So they're sure of a place in the final. Alan Blewett and Barry Metcalf have got to watch to see how all the other results pan out. John Halsey and Jason Gunny finish in third place. Rob Bradley in fourth. But it really is that close on overall point. It's just a win for outfit number one, that is Ivor Matthews and Peter Jones. In second place, number four, is Alan Blewett and Barry Metcalf. Third place, number 14, John Halsey and Jason Glenny. And fourth place, number seven, Rob and Jeff Bradley. Fifth place, number 17, Duncan Tolhurst. And in sixth place, number 10, that of course is Phil Pittman and Miles Simmons. The winning time, 127.32, 127.32. By Penton Citroen at Penton Corner, Wayhill. There of course the Citroen main agents, as you can see from the programme. We've got Roger Mesa, who's had two second places and a win. We've got Rob Winterberg who we know had problems in his last ride. We're we looking to see if he has appeared for this one. I'm anxiously looking across that star line. Well, I can see that they are indeed on the start line. Mark Edwards, who's not had the best of days, he's had a terrific season, but this afternoon things not going his way. Second place, his best result from his previous three rides. He's had two fifth places as well. And Roger Misa will be conscious, of course, that he was equal on points with Ivor Matthews going into this fourth ride. He will be desperately wanting to get a heat win and equal points going into that final. Starters let them go up, go the tapes. Looking to see who's made the best of the start is Mark Edwards has made a good start this time. Roger Misa goes after him and it's Misa on the inside as they go into the first bend. Mark Edwards just had the advantage going into that bend, but they're together as they come round the apex of the bend and up past me for the first time. It's Roger Misa and Shane Lapple that have got to the front. Mark Edwards and Nick Walters start in the second place. Rob Winderburn is in third. Richard Thomas moves up into fourth place. That's indeed how they pan out going down that back straight for the second time as Roger Misa and Shane Lapham would so desperately want to have a heat win this time. This is the last race before they go into the big final at the end of the day. Mark Edwards and Nick Walters still there in second place. It's all starting to close up for that fourth, fifth and sixth place. You can see Richard Thomas has turned it round in front of John Hiscock. Obviously you can see yellow flags going out straight away and the clock of the course in the interest of safety putting the red flag out. Obviously we've still got an outfit on that top bend. The riders being slowed down. Indeed the first race that we've had stopped this afternoon but all those crews will have to go back to the start line and do it again. <laughs> So the riders back in line for the start, or restart, I should say, of race 27. And we quickly get them underway. Mark Edwards once again has made a good start, but Roger Misa has gone with him. And it's those two again that go into that first bend. Rob Winterburn fighting for that third place. Royce Bradbury going the long way round. Tries to go around the outside of Mark Edwards, going very, very wide. But Roger Misa it is that leads as it comes past me. Mark Edwards and Nick Walders up in second place. Still that scrap going on for third between Royce Bradbury and Steve Kensington and Robin Chris Winderburn. Royce Bradbury again going very, very wide. Robin Chris Winderburn closing up on them as they go into this bend. Oh, Roger Mees, there it is, but still leads. And he was leading the race, of course, before it was stopped. So he'll be happy that he's got himself back into that position. And I'm sure would love to realise that he's on equal points if he stays in this winning position going into that final. Important, of 
exhausted, although the points don't get carried through into the final, they do allocate who gets choice of gate. And if there has been any advantage at all on that Stargate this afternoon, then that can be a critical factor. So, Roger Misa, trying to open up the gaps for Mark Edwards, staying reasonably close to him. And as you heard him say to Roscoe a few moments ago that he had had problems earlier on with the machinery. It looks as if he has now sorted it out. We wonder if that's going to put him in good stead for that B final. Roger Misa, then it is, that takes a win. Mark Edwards in second place. Roy Spreadbury finishing in third. I'm sure that Roger Misa's crew will be pleased to hear that. It was a win for outfit number two, Roger Misa and Shane Lapham. In second place, number eight, Mark Edwards and Nick Walters. In third place, number 11, Roy Spreadbury and Steve Kensington. And fourth place, number five, Rob and Chris Winderburn. Fifth place goes to number 15, John Hiscock and Matt Sleep. And that winning time, 125.34. 125.34. And so, riders that have done their arithmetic know exactly what they're going to do in this one. If you look at the lineup, Russell Ng has had a win and two thirds. Rob Wilson, a fourth, a second, and a win. Dave Steer, a third, a second, and a win. Steve Smith, a win, a third, and a second place. It's all very, very close on points. Any one of those four could possibly win this one, and that will make a lot of difference to the overall point situation, depending on how these four finish. I'm sure they all know that this is a very, very important one for them. Oh, Russelling is the one that's got that tight inside gate. Dave Steer right in the middle where he prefers to be. Steve Smith just next to him on that uh, centre spindle. Again, a few moments while they get settled on that start line. <laughs> well, in fact, problems with Steve Smith's outfit at the moment. Mechanics frantically working on that bike. I can't see what the problem is. He quickly runs away. Tapes go and we get underway with this the last of the qualifying rise and it's Dave Steer that's made the best of the starts at the moment as they go into that first corner. Terry Phillips has made a good start as well. He's gone the long way round and we've lost Steve Smith on that first bend. Well, Dave Steer it is that's got the lead but again in the interest of safety you can see that the clerk of the course has put the red flag out. So all five of those outfits will have to go back to that start line. But unfortunately going into that bend, as you can all see, we've lost Steve Smith and Nick Stace. Nick, I can see, was quickly up on his feet. And I have now been told that Steve Smith also is uh, on his feet. Him now coming round by us and obviously uh, none the worse for wear from that tumble in the first bend. See the officials calling them back into line. He goes to that far outside, pulls the outfit round, start up bringing them under starter's orders. Tapes go up and away we go with a clean restart of this, the last qualifying race. As we look to that first bend, it's once again Dave Steer that's got to the front. Rob Wilson has gone round the outside of him going into that first bend. Steve Smith is up in third place. It's all starting to get very, very close as they come round past me. Dave Steer and Andy Orchard still lead from Rob Wilson and Tony Miles in second. Russell Ng trying to get through into that third place. But Steve Smith at the moment has still got third. Russell Ng again looks for a way round. Follows Steve Smith closely down that back straight. 
as he starts to close up on Rob Wilson, Dave Steer is moving away, and Dave Steer looking very much in control at the moment, he's got faster and faster as the afternoon's gone on, already had one race win, that was in his third ride, previous to that he's had thirds and seconds, so he's been piling on the points, and remind you of course that Dave Steer did get himself up onto the roster in 1993, he finished third behind Steve Smith and Roger Visa in that year. Well, what's it going to be for 1995 as we see the completion of this, the last qualifying leg, and Dave Steer is still leading from Rob Wilson in second, Steve Smith in third at the moment, Russelling holding fourth, Terry Phillips in fifth. Does it stay like that, or is Steve Smith going to get through? He gets close again to Rob Wilson. And as we come towards the checkered flag this time, Dave Steer slows in that top end, but very much in control. Comes to the line, Steve Smith still looking for that second. It's going to be close, but Rob Wilson hangs on to it. Steve Smith in third, rustling in fourth, but that's a terrific ride from Dave Steer and Andy Orchard, and I feel sure that's got them a place in the big A final. Sponsored by Penton Toyota, a win for outfit number nine, that is, of course, Dave Steer and Andy Orchard. In second place, outfit number six. And of course it's Ron Wilson and Tony Miles and third place, number 12, Steve Smith and Mick Stace. Fourth place there, number three, Russelling and Paul Urich. And fifth place, number 16, Terry Phillips and Chris Spires. Sixth place, number 19, Sage Davis and Vince Davis. The winning time, 126.76, 126.76. <laughs> Steve Dahl, Samo Malenko, Clayton Williams, Andy Smith, Bo Brule, Glenn Cunningham, Steve Bishop, Matthias Kuga, David Steen, and Philippe Berger. They all go in the consolation final. Things to do. Uh, no need to dash off, and don't forget there'll be only one exit gate, so you might just as well stay on, enjoy yourself, talk about the event. Certainly stay on for the presentations. Here we go then, the B final gets underway. Let's see who gets the best of the gate. Overall getting well. Clayton Williams gaining well, but it looks to me as though into that top corner it was Andy Smith with the advantage. Uh, They're all round him. So there, Bo Brawl out in front. Andy Smith in second place. Steve Bishop in third. Philip Berger with a with a Clayton Williams with them. And that battle for third place is really quite good. comes round towards us once again and down in front it's Bo Brawl with the advantage over Andy Smith so in third place it's Philip Berger now ahead of Steve Bishop and Clayton Williams in that fifth spot riding number 24 the King's Lynn Speedway man it's been a very successful long track man leading this one Andy Smith in second the Berger in third, Steve Bishop in fourth, Matthias Kruger in fifth, Clay Williams now in sixth spot as they go around that corner. Once again, this time, the second round goes down to the first round of the season will be Bo Brawl, and we congratulate the Kings there, man. Another success for Bo Brawl. Paddy Smith in second, Philip Berger in third, Steve Bishop behind him, then Matthias Kruger, then David Steen, and then Clayton Williams. by JT Commercial's Violent Truck Centre, Wareham Road, is as follows. In first place, number 24, Bo Brule. In second place, number 8, Andy Smith. In third place, number 22, Philippe Berger. In fourth place, number 15, Steve Bishop. In fifth place, number 18, Glenn Cunningham. In sixth place, number 27, David Steen. In 7th place, number 7, Clayton Williams. In 8th place, number 28, Steve Dorr. In 9th place, number 20, 
Samo Milenko, who we just saw go round again. And in 10th place, number 26, Matthias Kroger. And the winner's time, 1 minute 28. Places Constellation Final, sponsored by Graham Hardy, Motorfax Unit C1, the Premier Centre. That's of course in Romsey. Wholesalers all motor accessories to the trade. Well, this the Constellation Final it might be, but so easily this could have been any big final around the country. Rob Bradley, John Halsey, Mark Edwards, Phil Pittman, Rob Winderburn and Terry Phillips. If you missed those numbers earlier on when I was giving them out, they are number 7, 14, 8, 10, Five and 16, but it really was so, so close on points with the sidecars. Just a couple of slightly different positions and any one of these riders could have elevated themselves up into that A final. Uh, one apology that's come from the camp of Russelling. They had qualified for this final, but uh, feeling a little bit tired was the comment. He's decided to not go in the final, so leaving it to the other six crews. So those of you that have enjoyed seeing Russell back again, which he certainly looks as if he's lost none of his old form, finding that uh, after four races, he gets a bit tough going. So we start with the consolation final. I can see the starter doesn't look happy with that. So the yellow flags is going out. will have to go back to that start the clerk of the course bringing the race to a stop for the starters to bring them under starters orders away go the tapes this time this looks like a clean one the starters happy with this one as they go down the back straight it's Rob Jeff Bradley that made a good start Terry Phillips is up there again as they go into this first bend it is Rob and Jeff Bradley that have got the lead from John Halsey now up in second place but once again the starter not happy with things the clerk of the course bringing the race to a halt a lot more room on that start line all four of them already there the starters again pulling them up to the tapes starter happy moves away away go the tapes and this time we get a clean start Terry Phillips looks to have made a good start but Rob Bradley comes flying through once again Rob and Jeff Bradley it is that lead going into that first bend. Terry Phillips right up the with them. Rob and Chris Winterburn trying to get round the outside. Up past Lee for the first time they go and it's Rob and Jeff Bradley that have established themselves in front. Terry Phillips desperately trying to stay with them. Phil Pittman trying to work his way through as well. Rob and Chris Winterburn also there close to the back wheel on Terry Phillips. As they go down the back state you can see that Rob and Jeff Bradley look to have this one under control as they've... Uh, on qualifying for the A final but come to be lead at the moment Rob Winderburn desperately trying to get through on the inside of Terry Phillips he's Rob this move through he goes up into second place and Phil Pittman trying to follow him as well he goes up into third place but still going into the last lap it's Rob and Jeff Bradley that lead well, he started his career and did very successfully as a 500cc solo competitor. It's great to see that just after two seasons, he's competing well in the sidecar class. Phil Pittman looking to get up into second. Phil Pittman moves through on the inside of Robert Chris Winderburn. They're up into second. And as the checker flag is made ready, it is going to be a win in the consolation final for outfit number seven, Robert Chris, Rob and Jeff Bradley. Phil Bentman and Amal Simmons finish in second place. Robin Chris Winterburn finish in third. Terry Phillips finishing in fourth. The race is final. A win for outfit number seven. That's Rob and Jeff Bradley. In second place, outfit number 10, Phil Pittman and Miles Simmons. In third place, number five, Rob and Chris Winderburn. In fourth place, number 16, Terry Phillips and Chris Spires. The winning time, 128.48, 128.48. <laughs> I'll remind you, of course, that Steve Smith appears in this final again. He has the most uh, titles of the Ace of Aces. He's won it in 1982, 84, 89. He was third in 1990, and he won it again in 1993. Four titles overall. Roger Misa has uh, really been the one who's been so close all the time. He's won it once back in 87. He was second in 88, second in 89, and second to Steve Smith in 93. 
Arte Steer we know has been on the roster and back in 1993. He was third then. Alan and John Blewett finished third in 1992. So uh, a great collection of experienced crews competing for the 1995 title. Now we look across that far side and they are pulling the last of the crews into line. I can see that Roger Misa and Ivor Matthews have taken these inside gates. Steve Smith right on the far outside. The starters at the moment not happy with Steve Smith touching the tapes. Dave Steer, interestingly enough, has taken that inside line in the middle of 1995. They're obviously all conscious of that, that this start's so, so important. Well, the starters put their arms up, they bring them all up under starters' orders, bringing them towards the tapes. Not happy with that, they move away, the tapes go, and as they get underway, we look to see who's made the best of the start. It's Alan and Fluid has made the best of the start once again. Dave Steer has gone with him. Ivan Matthews back in third place. Rob Wilson going the long way round and trying to get round the outside. Roger Meester is up there on the inside as well, but at the moment, it's Dave Steer fighting it out with Alan Blewett and Barry Metcalf. Alan Blewett and Barry Metcalf it is that lead going into this pit bend for the first time, and Dave Steer and Andy Orchard move through in the front. Rob Wilson and Tony Miles in third place at the moment. Roger Misa now moving through though, and Roger Misa comes up the inside. Will he get that third place? Alan Blewett again goes round the outside to try and get the lead. Rob Wilson comes between the two of them. And Rob Wilson now moves up into second place and goes after Dave Steer. Roger Misa moving up on the inside. What's going to be the one, two, three as they come across the line as Dave Steer and Andy Orchard hold the lead, but only just from Rob Wilson and Tony Miles. Roger Misa and Shane Lapham move into third place and it gets close again in this top bend as Rob Wilson goes round the outside. Rob Wilson is going for the lead as he comes past me. Still, Dave Steer just has it, but Rob Wilson with a slight advantage perhaps going into that top bend. He's got the lead as he goes around that top corner. As he goes down the back straight, it is Rob Wilson and Tony Miles that lead. Dave Steer comes back at him again as he goes underneath into this last bend. Terrific last bend as they come round towards us and this is going to be the checkered flag. This is going to be the ace of aces title. It's Rob Wilson, Tony Miles will lead him on and Rob Wilson does it. Tremendous afternoon racing of sidecar competition, but would you have said Rob Wilson at the beginning of the day would take the 1995 total? He will be ecstatic with that one because you would never expect him to find Rob Wilson to have taken the 1995 trophy, but he's done it. 127.03, 127.03. In second was outfit number nine, Dave Steer and Andy Orchard. In third place, number two, Roger Misa and Shane Lapple. Fourth place there, outfit number one, Ivor Matthews and Peter Jones. And in fifth place, number 12, Steve Smith and Mick Stace. The only other finisher there, in sixth place, number four, Alan Blewett and Barry Metcalf. To Robert Bath, Jeremy Doncaster, Paul Hurry, Steve Schofield, Jason Crump, Paul Fry, Stefan Tresseau, Mark Loram and Simon Wigg. Those are the competitors who will dispute the 1995 Ace of Aces Solo Championship and receive the Sport Act Trophy and £800 for their efforts. And we're going to do that presentation up behind the Solo start line. Jim and myself will be up there immediately following the racing and we'll get that presentation underway. Don't forget, take it gently on your way out of the field. Only a single exit. It's going to take us all a little while to get out, so please be patient. So then, looking to our left, we can see the competitors coming into line. Jeremy Dockhouse 
faster and more. And a tremendous race going on here. As Kelvin Pace has been to win. and a fitting Ace of Aces solo final for 1995. The results then of the 1995 solo Ace of Aces championship. In first place, number one, Colby Tatum. In the second place, number 21, Mark Lorem. In third place, Number 10, Steve Schofield. In 4th place, number 11, Jeremy Doncaster. In 5th place, number 2, Paul Hurry. In 6th place, number 6, Stefan Tressel. In 7th place, number 3, Robert Bart. In 8th place, number 4, Jason Crump. In 9th place, number 17, Paul Fry, no 10th finisher. The time for the winner, 1 minute 27.98. What a trophy, the Martin Yates trophy goes to Mark Laura.
want to know what's being said out there. There's an argument about something too big, but I can't work out exactly what they were on about. <laughs> That's it, Roger's stuck. Now, rigor mortis is set in England. The arthritis is giving him hell. No, Roger, that was not a good place to put a champagne bottle. <laughs> I don't believe this. This is only third place. Yeah, you're all right there, aren't you? Right, we've got third place, we now of course move on to second and what almost a magical fairy tale story that this is possibly going to be. I said yesterday that they were here for practice, they blew an engine apart, they were then scrambling around the rest of the pit to see who could lend them an engine. It was discovered that Robbie Wilson Jr. had an engine in his machine down in Kent. So off they trotted down to Kent, they ripped the engine out of Robbie Wilson's machine, they travelled back to Sussex, today's workshop, put it in, and today it's all come right. They almost had the victory, but as it is, they're in second place, they there and have the orchard! Yeah. But now I'll start with you, Tony, obviously, uh, passenger this afternoon. 
Other than his after his first try, you must have been thinking perhaps not again. Yeah, we thought we had a lobby in the first team, and then I thought we put the speedway tire in because we didn't have a speedway tire. Steve McCarroll fed a lot on the speedway tire. So there again is the secret, changing over the right side. It's obviously something trying to pinch my worthless wallet. <laughs> Roll! What can I say? It's always deemed as being, dare I say it, the one big trophy to win, and now you've done it. Yeah, very much so. You know, it's, uh, it's good to win it, but to be honest with you, I'm going to be, you know, it's good to win any of them, to be honest with you. It's not just the game, it's good to win them all. And, uh, obviously, we, we don't, we beat finals. Uh, you know, we were the fourth man, but today, obviously, it's coming right. But long last. Well, indeed, it did come right. I think you'll agree that with the sidecar racing we've seen this afternoon, we have seen some of the most tremendous uh, sidecar racing. Hold on, Roger, what's another word, I think? I think you'll all agree when you know how fitting it is for Ron Wilson to win because it's not only did he win on his bike, but he led Dave Engine and Dave Deere and Engine from yesterday, which you probably all know about. I've been borrowing spares on them all day. So perhaps if we borrow everything off him, we won't be able to win much more. <laughs> <laughs> no, there still keeps something in reserve, obviously. Well, indeed, let's give you a big one more big cheer to all three of our winning crews. Third, it was Roger Easter and Dave Apple. Second, it was Ben Deere and Andy Orchard. Event, if that sort of thing didn't happen, would it? <laughs> yes, I know, we get used to this sort of thing. <laughs> well, Sandy, after that, follow it with our winners from the solo. Thank you, Jim. Uh, just dry off a little and you'll be okay. Yeah? But at least uh, it was a noble call. It shows you the target instead of the ladies, so you're okay. Right then, well, let's uh, take a look now at the top three of the solo competition. And uh, once again, a super and a very fitting uh, Ace of Aces solo final. In third place, can we have Steve Schofield? Hello, Steve. Oh, David Kiss, go in here because it's not going to be. Steve, you must have thought, great start on him with a good shot there. 